know the team gave up a lot in order for them to be able to win with Ben and then keep the ball in Ben's hands, including getting Al Horford and getting rid of Jimmy Butler. Um, it seems that they are heavily, um, you know, at a crossroads where they probably there's I think they're reaching the point of no return. And I think as Wiggins continues to kind of push in on his in regards to him not wanting to get vaccinated um, and Ben Simmons also not wanting to play, I think we'll slowly start to see a Warriors Ben Simmons trade kind of open up and formulate because I think at, at a certain point, the for the 76ers, the risk is just uh, ultimately just kind of, you know, too high to just continue to lose pieces. And I think he's too valuable of a piece. And for the Warriors, I think Wiggins is worth parting with. And let's just, and I know, you know, Steve Kerr said, uh, you know, yesterday that he feels like he might play Jonathan Kaminga a lot at the four, play him more at the four. If those guys don't necessarily fit where they want them to fit in, I can see Philly saying, just give us some pieces, give us some picks, and we'll work it out. Um, what are your thoughts on what, you know, Ben Simmons versus the 76ers? Um, Joel, I'll actually let you go first this time. Um, how do you feel about Ben Simmons versus the 76ers? I think Ben Simmons versus the 76ers is very interesting. Probably like one of the top, like top three, top five, if not top one headline headed into the, um, in, uh, the NBA season, which I think is going to be great. So I just can't wait to see how it unfolds. I definitely think Philly got to unload him. I don't think they should be in any sort of rush to get rid of him. Um, um, well, they kind of do actually at this point, maybe they do need to be in somewhat kind of a rush. About a, a couple of weeks, training camp is starting pretty much now, and it's preseason to be going in a couple of weeks. But I think they should definitely try to get uh, get as much as they can for him. I don't think they should rush and try to get him out of there quick. Um, some of my favorite offers that come to my mind, um, possibly maybe Dame or CJ from Philadelphia. I mean, from from Portland would be nice. Um, I like the um, Oklahoma. Maybe getting a haul from there with including Shea. Maybe getting De'Aaron Fox. A couple of deals really uh, pop out to me. But I think it's like it's top tier NBA drama. Like it's the number one arguably uh, story heading into this next season. Um, I think Ben Simmons is extremely talented. So I don't think any team that is looking for some sort of centerpiece or uh, somebody to possibly win a championship with, they should go get this guy now because I think his potential is as 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 low as his stock is right now in the streets and everywhere. Um, I still think he's worth the gamble. Um, so just somebody should go ahead and uh, go get that man. But like I was saying on one of the Hoops and Bruce podcasts, you can't Ben Simmons' name. You can't say it in the streets right now. Y'all has Danny ever mentioned Ben Simmons' name? You get the craziest reaction. Like, oh, he sucks. He's trash. Get him out the NBA. But it's like I definitely think that's overblown, and he'll have a, still have a great career and be a heck of a player. But it's just not. Um, it's it's not gonna be in Philly. So let's see how that. All mm-hmm. right, go ahead, Pavy. I mean, I just think Philly just bombed the situation. And, I mean, I can understand Ben for taking this thought. First of all, they've been trying to trade him for, like, 24 months on the lowest of keys. At, <laughs> like, like, seriously, like, like, they've been trying to trade him for at least two years. And he's heard trade talks. So, I mean, you know, and then, again, you come out. I know the Ben Simmons thing at the end of the game was a huge thing, but that's not why they lost that series, bro. And for, like, people to kind of, like, break it down to, like, that moment, yeah, I'm sure he does feel away and does want to move on, as he should. I think they bought the situation. Should have traded him a long time ago. Um, I'm sure he made this clear to you that he didn't want to come back sometime in August. And you tried to just let it hold over, see if maybe. And then also, you did the thing of, like, destroying his trade value. If you were going to trade him, why would you say some of those things? Oh, we don't think we can win a championship with him. Why would you say some of that if you try to trade him? Man? You should be talking him up like, oh, man, you know, he's a you know great player. You know, maybe. I mean, I don't know something outside of what you just said. So I feel him. Um, as far as Joel Embiid's comments, it was funny to me because, like, I don't know how much Joel and better Joel Embiid has got since he's been in the NBA. Like, Joel Embiid that kind of came in the league and been the same player. I mean, he was great when he got here. I think the only thing he's really done is been more, it's been healthier some years. And also, even with him, like, all oh, like, I want to be more in the post. I don't even know if that's true. He likes dribbling the ball and handling the ball and shooting step backs. That's the way he likes to play basketball. So I did think that his comments were a little bit funny to me just because how many times have we yelled at that man to get on the block? So much. Also, I watched a lot of old basketball games. I didn't see people run pick and rolls in the literal paint as a coach, as, 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 as a GM, as a whatever. It's your job to figure this shit out. Figure it out. And then also, one more thing to mention is, I don't think they've really had a healthy playoff run in a minute. Outside of last year, which they got upset, the year before, I think Ben Simmons got hurt. The year before, I forget what happened. Oh, they lost in that game. <coughs> seven buzzer beater shot by Kawhi. It was Jimmy Butler sprained his ankle. People don't remember this. Jimmy Butler sprained his ankle down the stretch. And then even MB was mad about the um, Butler thing. The thing about that was, bro, Letting them go may not have been the issue, but you traded for Josh Richardson. 
That was the issue. You let him go for Josh Richardson. So I just think Philly just in general bonding situations. I think Elton Brand made a lot of um uncalled for moves like paying Al Horford that $140 million. Remember, I think we were all shocked when he got the deal. I thought he was going to – remember, he he had, I think, $30 million left from Boston. He opted out. We was like, oh, ain't no way he going to see that. And then Philly come up four years, 140. So I think the Philly just in general just bombed the whole situation. And at this point, it's probably best for both parties to just move on, start over, and do something different. Um, I'm going to say with, with Philly, first of all, Joel was 100% correct. Uh, almost a thousand percent correct. Like they fucked up when they traded Jimmy Butler. Um, to me, that was the only time why I gave them a legit shot to even, you know, get to the final. Of course, they were one Kawhi shot away from making it, but Jimmy was a guy who could go out there and get you buckets in the end of games. It's something that you know MB can do that, but it's it's not as effective when you have a big guy doing that. And also to me, it made Ben Simmons be able to do what Ben Simmons does. Now, as far as I, I disagree with MB hasn't got better. I mean, let's not forget he was basically the MVP favorite before he got hurt last year. But that also has to do with he also says stays hurt. I think Philly is in a fucked up position because it's like that they've been trying to trade Ben for two years while shitting on Ben. Like, you, that, you can't do that. If you know you're trying to get rid of this guy, you need to keep his trade value as high as possible. So I don't even know realistically what they can get back from. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going to come back. I think that's all – we all know that's not going to happen. When, when, when you see when superstars are disgruntled, it's pretty much going to tra- be a trade. So it's not a matter of if, just a matter of when. But when he goes, as much as I love Joel, I don't know. This team's not, I don't I don't really think this team can do anything like if they don't get a decent return back. Now, I don't think Portland would do this deal. But if they were somehow able to get Dame Lillard back for Ben Simmons, that would be perfect for Philly. But as far as this actual comments, I don't think he was wrong. I think both sides are actually right. I agree. I understand why Ben's not fucking with the Sixers. And I understand why the Sixers ain't fucking with Ben. I really don't think he's that impressive. I think he's very, very fucking overrated. Might be the most overrated player in the NBA. I don't see what much he does. Like, And the fact he didn't do himself no favors in the playoffs. I've never seen a guy just not be aggressive like him. And the shit I saw against the, the Hawks was just inexcusable, man. So I don't, I don't really know where Philly goes with. Um. I definitely disagree with Brody. Um, ben Simmons is probably the second best athlete in the NBA today. Um, on any other team, he's probably an MVP and defensive player of the year, future of both. Ben Simmons um, this year had at least the least amount of shots he's had in his career. He still averaged a decent amount of points. He's only been 10 shots in the playoffs. He shot the ball in the second round eight times. He still averaged that 60%. Still average eight assists, still average seven rebounds, top tier defense. Um, I think Doc Rivers did a horrible job of getting him looks. I would blame Ben Simmons if he shot the ball and just missed it. But the fact that he didn't shoot for four or five fourth quarters in that series lets me know it's a coaching problem and it's an organization problem. Um, they don't like Ben Simmons, they don't value Ben Simmons, they're going to regret it. Ben Simmons is unbelievable. You take Four years of any NBA player's career, and they've played in the NBA four years. Very rarely have anybody made the All-Star the first three of their four years. Very rarely has somebody made four All-NBA teams, whether defense or just All-NBA. Steals champion, defensive player of the year, runner-up. You give Ben Simmons 15 shots, he's an MVP in this league. The Sixers built the team around Embiid. They play too slow. Ben Simmons is probably the best transition player in the game today. He has no chance to really be in transition. Philly should get rid of him, you know, if they were they they put their foot in their mouth and they're going to regret it because he's going to go on and be, you know, it's, it reminds me of Giannis real early in Giannis' career. If you look at Giannis in year four or five, you didn't see it, but you've seen glimpses of it. With Ben Simmons, you see a lot more clearly. And if you get him in the open court, I, I think Golden State Warriors are crazy if they can't. I, I think they may be trying to wait for the value to go down, but it's no way you don't get Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is somebody that's going to help you win today and is the future of your team. Yeah, I agree. I'm not mad at any of them opinions. I mean, I've echoed those on a few of our shows. I just think that ultimately, whoever gets him will definitely get a player that's amazing. Like I said, I, th- I think he could be better than LeBron. Now, I'm, now I was tweaking in retrospect, but at the same token, as you mentioned, Glasses, what he's done already through his career 
his value should be much higher. And I think a lot of that is perception. And a lot of that is just, um, you know, you, you know, it's him not really having an ego. Um, the funniest part about watching his documentary on Showtime uh, was that, you know, you saw a very, you know, young guy that, you know, that had a very high ego. And now I don't really see that same individual in the NBA. I see a guy that's very passive and seems to be timid. And like he kind of he 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 talks and postures himself um, a little bit more assertively than he actually is on the basketball floor. And I didn't expect to see that version of him. I thought he was going to be much more aggressive when he came into the NBA, much more of an attacker, much more of just an overall like physical presence. And I, I don't will. physically feel him on the floor. And all he's the best defensive player, and he plays great with finesse on defense as well as playing solidly with finesse on offense. I just thought he would just be much more of a, a much more aggressive player than he uh, is now. And I think a lot is, of that is on him, and a lot of that is on the organization. What's funny is the brothers from not from America. They don't have the ego. Um, the reason Katie is number one and Giannis is number two is because Giannis doesn't have an ego. And I think we're so used to seeing players play with, especially black players, play with that chip on their shoulder, that when we see somebody that thinks somebody is better than them, like last year in the playoffs when yeah. he was like, oh, Kevin Durant's the best player in basketball. Yeah. Then proceed to what Giannis out <laughs> game and go on to win a championship and give the Suns a 50-piece nuggets in the last game. He showed you who was the best player. doesn't matter what comes out of his mouth. And I think we're just used to black players having this chip, this attitude. Yeah. And when we see other people from other places, they are brothers, but they are a different kind of brothers. They, they don't feel their country did them in. They don't have the same attitudes that we grow up with here. Mm -hmm. So I think we don't take their basketball serious. But I've seen Ben Simmons. He is not a joke. He is not a fucking joke, man. He is serious. And he's not. he's going to be tough to deal with. He's going to be tough to deal with, man. That type of talent doesn't even happen. That guy is 6'11", and he can guard Trey Young. Trey Young needed a pick to deal with him guarding him. Also, 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 I would say, like, up to uh, TB's point about him not being a great I realize the situation he came into. Like, he gets drafted, but he breaks his foot. But that's the year Embiid comes out and plays those 30 games and gives you, like, 23, 24 points. You're like, oh, shit, we got to build a whole team around Embiid. So we come into a situation, even though he's a number one pick and you think he's a number one pick, like, most number one picks, everything is for you. Like, once you get picked number one, the whole team is yours. He goes there, and he's automatically the complimentary piece to Joel Embiid. So it's like, yeah, you can say he's not a, but it's like his 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 mind frame is different from day one. I think if he goes to where where he's like, okay, here go the ball, bro. It's all you. He may turn out to be a different player than what he is right now mentally. But I think it's just you, if you put him with the Warriors, he's the MVP next year. That's a cold bar for you. We gonna name the episode that. Yeah. I if think you go with the Warriors. He's the MVP next year. Steve will get him fifteen shots. He'll average twenty plus points. Average ten assists. He'll average nine rebounds at minimum, and they'll win fifty plus games. He'll be the MVP. It'll blow your mind. Unmute yourself, TV. And whatever you said, TPJ, nobody can hear you. Nobody heard you. Unmute yourself. <laughs> sorry. So let's. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No. 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 I was gonna say we'll see, but I was gonna. Say